From KCNC TV, Colorado's news channel, this is First News, Colorado's number one early news program with Larry Green and Linda Farrell. Good afternoon from First News. I hope you're packing an umbrella today. That's right, because it looks ugly outside. Very heavy rain being reported in some areas of town. We've had uh, heavy rain in the western foothills over on the east side of town over toward Aurora. Mm. Uh, heaviest rain in the last hour has been over in the vicinity of Mississippi and Buckley. There's been some rain, some hail. And I think we're going to expect this kind of weather probably for the next 24 hours, the way things are looking right now. That means low-lying areas are susceptible to some flooding in the next 24 hours. You could get some hail on your garden. You could have a lot of problems. We've already seen a number of funnel clouds around the region this afternoon, just real small cold funnels. Nothing has touched the ground, and really nothing has been too dangerous in, in that area. So We are watching all that for you. And we will. We'll and a uh, complete update coming up just a little bit later in our program. But also happening right now, over nine hours into the voting, election officials say it has been a slightly above average day at the polls. Obviously, it is the mayor's race that is getting the bulk of all the attention today. Now, for more on Election Day, we go live to Suzanne McCarroll at the Denver Election Commission. Suzanne, take it away. Well, Larry and Linda, as you mentioned, it's been more than nine hours. The polls open bright and early at 7 o'clock this morning, and people here at the Election Commission says that turnout really has varied um, from precinct to precinct. One spokeswoman says that it appears that so far, at least today, the north part of the city has had a heavy voter turnout as well as the southeastern sections. Officials had predicted about a 52% turnout. The hours right now between 4 and 7 are likely to be very busy as people begin getting off work. Now, two dedicated voters weren't about to wait until after work to cast their ballots. Mayor Pena was out at 8 o'clock this morning voting at the fire station at 26th and Federal. Not to be outdone, his chief opponent, Don Bain, was up with the sun voting at Botanic Gardens. And I think it is safe to say that all the candidates are urging people to get out and vote. Again, the polls are open until 7 o'clock tonight. If you have any sorts of questions about where to vote or if you've moved recently and have questions about that, call the Election Commission. We will give you that number right now, 575-2351. Again, it's 575-2351. The Election Commission, as we mentioned, had predicted about a 52% turnout. The obvious concern right now is since it is pouring out some thunder and lightning that that may literally dampen the spirits of some of the would-be voters coming out after work. So they're encouraging you to get out and vote and to ignore the weather. Again, this is the Election Commission. They are here and ready, ready and willing to take your calls. Reporting live, I'm Suzanne McCarroll, News Center 4. Larry? Suzanne, you were with us four years ago. You happen to remember what the weather was like on Election Day four years ago? Yeah, as I recall, I had a hat, snow boots, and uh, snow mittens on. Considerably different. I was wise this time. I chose an indoor spot. A little more springy this time, but the snow, I remember, was coming in horizontally that day. All right, more about that at 5. Thanks for the report, Suzanne. Linda? Also making news, David Gunther is mentally competent to stand trial for the alleged murder of his wife last March. That's what a district judge in Brighton ruled this morning after getting the latest report from the Colorado State Hospital. Gunther's attorneys asked for time to file objections to that ruling. They'll be back in court on May 29th. And the search is still on for a two-year-old Thornton boy missing since yesterday morning. Richard Wetter was reported missing by his mother, who said he wasn't in their Thornton apartment when she awoke yesterday. Today, crews searched around a pond near the boy's home. Sophisticated TV camera was used to travel through some underground storm drains, but there was no sign of the boy. Well, if somebody knows where he's at or who he's with, just get a hold of the Thornton Police Department and let them know so we can get him back and bring him home. He needs his mom, and his mom needs him. You think someone took him? I don't know. That search is now taking place in the area of 84th and Pecos in Thornton. So far, it now appears no Coloradans were injured or killed in that attack on the U.S. frigate Stark. A partial list today of the dead, missing, or seriously injured lists no one from Colorado. The Stark was hit Sunday by missiles fired from Iraqi jet fighters. The Iraqis call the attack a mistake. A helicopter crash at Fort Carson this morning is still under investigation. The chopper went down about 9 a.m. Four airmen on board were injured, but none of them seriously. Cool weather in the news today, and it looks like it will be tomorrow as well. More about that coming up, and the first news quiz. And we've got a tiny baby with a big name who's new at the Denver Zoo. <laughs> Thank you. 
must be the season with more babies at the Denver Zoo. One of the tiniest is a Celebes mukok. At five weeks old, the baby monkey only weighs a little over a pound. But he's got a big name, Rambo. His mother isn't able to take care of him, so little Rambo goes home with a different <laughs> keeper every night. Oh, he's so cute. He is. Isn't Colorado weather beautiful today? Isn't it? Oh, get out of here. <laughs> Always happens on election day. It's big. I guess so. This kind of weather. Don't run for mayor. <laughs> <laughs> what is the lesson? I guess there must be some lesson. Or buy a lot of umbrellas. Too. Yeah. Colorado <laughs> voters are some brave lot, aren't they? They really are. If we get 50% turnout today, that'll be terrific. It sure will. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, what's going on around our community, but uh, bear in mind that some of the rain around our area could be heavy mm -hmm. and steady for about the next, well, at least overnight and through the early morning hours tomorrow. So uh, flood-prone areas, uh, watch out for those. Those areas that got a lot of water over the weekend, they can get it again tonight. Temperature of 65 degrees out at the airport, humidity at 68%. We have a west wind at 12 to 23 miles per hour and a rising barometer at 29.85 inches. The uh, forecast for tonight, well, it's fairly simple. Rain and thunderstorms and have all of that off and on through the night tonight. The low around 48 degrees. Tomorrow, we'll have rain, general steady rain in the morning and then toward midday, we might see some breaks in it, but that'll give way to afternoon thunderstorms with the heat developed uh, with the sunshine coming out tomorrow. High of 69, not that cold and the low should be around 48 degrees. Looking ahead to Thursday, partly sunny skies and a chance for those afternoon thunderstorms. The high, only 67 degrees. So we're going to be in this rain pattern for the next couple of days. Don't build an ark, there's no need for that. But carry an umbrella around or maybe a snorkel. That might help I wonder too. what it looks like right over Denver about now. Is Copter 4 available for I us right so. now? Why don't we find There's out? Paul Day with a, He's a brave one. busy looking windshield there, Paul. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> I could use a snorkel up here, Larry. About 15 minutes ago, we got an unconfirmed report of a funnel cloud over Aurora at Mississippi and Buckley. And let me stress that's an unconfirmed report. But in flying around up here for the last 45, 50 minutes, we haven't seen anything to indicate any tornado conditions. And correct me if I'm wrong, Larry, I don't think we're even under a tornado watch, much, much less a warning at this point. Let's go outside now and look at the storm. We've encountered tremendous amounts of rain flying around up here. And what is unusual about these rain cells is that they're tracking in several different directions. Usually, as you know, you can count on them to track either to the east or to the northeast. But some of these cells are moving even to the west and to the south. There are uh, reports of localized flooding north of the mousetrap. And there have also been some reports of hail over northwest Denver. Larry and Linda? You are exactly right, Paul. Uh, we checked out that uh, report of a funnel cloud, and really nothing was showing up on radar even good enough to have that. There may have been a little rotation, maybe a cold funnel, but uh, really nothing serious going on out there this afternoon, unless it might be the hail or the flooding, some of those areas like that. All right, thanks a lot, Paul. Thanks for the report. Good pictures up there, too. Sure is. Yeah. Election Eve landslide for senior mania at East High overnight. Campaign signs, a forest of them, covered the lawn. Seniors nabbed the signs from area neighborhoods and used them to make their own political statement. All right, let's go to the first news quiz. This will warm up somebody's day if we get a winner. We had a winner yes, yesterday. Yes, we start over with $5,000. Yeah, $5,600, $5,800 we gave away yesterday. Today we have $5,000. And, uh, well, here we go. An interesting answer to the quiz today for $5,000. Central City Sub is the answer to the quiz today. Even the Coast Guard couldn't find a submarine in the mountain mining town of Central City, or could they? That's an interesting phrase or two there. There's some truth to the tale of a Central City submarine. Leo McGuire is going to explain part two in his series on Colorado legends coming up on News Center 4 at 5. I'm intrigued. I'll stick around. Me too. So Central City Sub is the answer to the quiz today. First call goes to 233. Okay, 233. Three. The odds of getting a... All right, we got the operator saying that that number is temporarily out of service. So 233, three, the particular number we have right now, is out of service. We'll make a call just a little bit later on in the program. Linda? Stay with us. You could win that $5,000 right here on First News. Coming up, a world of song beckons for our youth on the move. And if senior prom beckons today's teens, <laughs> they better start saving up. That's right. <laughs> It has been a long time since starry-eyed seniors gathered in the high school gym for prom. This year, students have been renting everything from limos and grand ballrooms to riverboats and amusement parks for their prom, and the cost is not cheap. Informal surveys around the country show both boys and girls spending from $200 to $450 for senior prom. 
I'm going to let my kids grow up. <laughs> this week's Youth on the Move is an outstanding senior at Elizabeth High School in Elizabeth, Colorado. And Kristen McCloskey says she's eager to graduate and pursue her goals. I'm anxious to see what she does with them, too. Right. She's thoroughly enjoyed high school, but she's an ambitious young woman, ready to get going on her careers. That's right, careers. She wants to go after two professions. Meet Becky Bradley. I may not be every mother's dream for her little girl. And my face Becky Bradley's parents can't help but be proud of her. She sings every time she gets the opportunity, with the school choir and jazz band and at her church. She's active in Students Against Drunk Driving, the Speech and Drama Club, and the Creative Writing Club. She's an aide in the counselor's office, and she spends most of her free time with future business leaders of America. She was a state representative this year, responsible for organizing a number of conferences. Becky's been a really active member of the student body here at Elizabeth High School, and the principal says after graduation, she'll be missed. I think students respect her leadership ability, and she's a good friend. She, she helps people kind of on a one-to-one -one counseling thing by talking to them, as, as she probably has been helped by other students. Um, she has provided a lot of individual counseling. Becky's first love is singing, and she'd like to do it professionally, but she's realistic, too, and plans to major in accounting in college to establish a more secure career. Hopefully I'll get my CPA right out of college, so I'll be able to go out into the world and maybe support myself while I try to become a singer. Becky's excited about her future, and it's a pleasure to introduce her to you as this week's Youth on the Move. And here she is, all the way from Elizabeth. Thanks for driving through the rain. What are you going to do this summer before you start college in the fall? I'm going to finish up real estate school, which I'm attending right now, so I can earn some money for college. Well, best of luck to you, Becky. Congratulations. Thank you. And here's your medallion. Take this to Fort Lewis with you, okay? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Becky Bradley. Uh, I wish I could buy a little of that ambition. Yeah, <laughs> She's got lots of it. Sure Thanks, Becky. Thank you very much. Coming up, a hot workout and cool breezes, or cool gadgets, that is, from troubleshooter Tom Martino. And singer Crystal Gale spent some time with the Today Show gang. We'll tell you how you can do the same thing. Thank you.